Isaac, I told um I told uh the little boo thing over here when I first met her <laughs> that she needed to date multiple people. He I did. said I said what you should do cuz she said cuz she you know she's had a little journey and we discussed that and I said what you need to do is even the playing field. Just date multiple people. Don't be having sex with people. Just date them. And yeah. so that when the guy who's really serious, he's going to step up and then all those other people will fall by the wayside. She said, I'm telling you, I'm too busy. I can't, I can't be, I can't I don't focus. Date. I can't date multiple people. She I said, can't. I can only be with one person and if it don't work out with him, then <laughs> go somewhere else. But I ain't no way I could be juggling all these people. I just can't do it. I did. And somebody else told you to do that too. And I'm Someone like, else told me to do that. And I, what I, what They're I just looking her, out. Yeah, looking out for you. Won't be like, what, hey, what, get your what heart I, hurt. I, okay. I remember. <laughs> but what I told what you to say. <laughs> so when we first started, you know, having the intentional conversations, we told each other, we eventually did tell each other like, Hey, I'm not seeing anyone else. And he said the same thing. And so a few weeks went by and I brought it back up and I was like, Hey, like, you know how we said that we weren't seeing anyone else. Cause it was like the very beginning. Yeah. And I was like, is that like an expectation that we don't see anyone else? Or are you just like stating that you currently weren't? And he was like, no, 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 no. Like, we're not seeing anyone else. If you want to see other people, then you can see them, but you're not going to see seeing me. Yeah. 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 Isaac, yeah. Isaac, there it is. Isaac said, I already know what I want. I am on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Life is about helping others. Dear future wifey has been doing exactly that. You stated that women are to present and not to pursue. It has given us a, a roadmap on how relationships were meant to be by God. There are still black men who love the Lord and their end goal is marriage. Thank you for teaching me how to stay lit, how to be intentional and transparent. You read your, your letter, I cried. I just got married two months ago and I'm listening to the podcast so I can stay married. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield and this is season four these dating streets on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Lataris R. Whitfield. Listen, we are going a little bit deeper in these dating streets. Uh, I love it when we get around this holiday season because, you know, singleness hits a little differently around the holidays. But before we get started, make sure, let me ask you this. Are you still shacking up with us? We're in the fourth season. So if you're watching this content and can't give me the honor of just hitting that subscribe button, come on, man, what are we really doing? Let's make a commitment and subscribe today. Uh, we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and we need everybody to do their part and pull together. Well, today on today's podcast, uh, I have a good buddy of mine. I met her a couple of months ago, and I've just been so elated about her love journey. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Courtney Blakely and Isaac Shepard. How y'all doing? Hey, what's hey. going on? Uh, so, <laughs> Courtney, I saw a post that you made the other day, mm -hmm. um, and you announced to the world that you were in this relationship. <laughs> yes. um, and I thought it was the cutest thing. I love the support that you have for Isaac over here. And I was like, "This is this is this is encouraging." Um, we're going to call this episode "The Gift of Love." Mm the gift of love. I think that love is one of the greatest gifts that we could give because Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, but even more so, the reason why this is a significant time to record this episode, uh, y'all not aware of this, but I talked about this in the last episode of how everyone that I have on my podcast is here for uh, specific intentions. Right. And even the dates that I recorded, God is so finite in how he chooses those dates. Well, on today... Which is, what's today's date? December 19th. December the 19th of 2018 was the year I walked away from a toxic situation that almost destroyed me. Mm. Wow. And I was like, so every year um, I always celebrate moments in my life that were bad. I look at it as a do-over and I try to do something impactful and powerful. Uh, go and do work for the homeless or whatnot. December was a month that I coined as the death of December because December of 2015 was one of the most trying Decembers I've ever went through in my life. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I woke up this morning and I said, December 19th. And I looked on my calendar and I went all the way back to 2018 and I said, between the hours of seven o'clock and eight o'clock was when I went over said individual's house and said, I'm done. Wow. And I'm unplugging. And so I'm excited to celebrate your love journey today. So, uh, Courtney, 
You moved here by way of Atlanta, by way of Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. Um, when did you move to Dallas? I arrived on, I think it was August 16th of this year. So like a few months ago. And so you would look at some of the episodes that I would do and then you would yes. share it. And at one point I was like, uh, oh, I was the Essence episode. Yes. It was the, epi- the Essence. What what resonated with that episode? Everything. but <laughs> <laughs> Everything, but especially when she was talking about her celibacy journey and when she spoke about previous relationships and she said that she was kind of like, blaming said person but she should have never been in those situations anyways like everything that she said though i love that episode isaac have you had the honor of watching any of the episodes i did which I did. episode you watch i saw the, the episode with uh jonathan Jonathan oh, Evans. Mm-hmm. sex expectations yeah that will be the one he go look at sex expectations <laughs> <laughs> so so you went and saw sex expectations what you take away from that the reason why i saw it is because of jonathan yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 are you a member of ocbf I am. I joined just before COVID started, March 1st, mm-hmm. 2020. Uh, right after I joined, we started going through our membership class and then COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you originally from Dallas? Yes, I'm from Arlington, Texas. Some people say, that's Dallas. Yeah, that's Dallas. Yeah, that's Dallas. Ar- specifically Arlington, Texas. So, so you are born and raised here. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, you got here, you said August the 16th? Yes. August the 16th, I responded to uh, a post that you shared or a story that you shared. And I went to your YouTube channel and I was like, oh, you got this powerful YouTube channel that you're out representing the Lord and all this amazing stuff. And I was like, oh, this is nice. I love it when I see people that use their platform to promote Christ. Absolutely. Um, And so when I looked at that, I was like, okay. So then I DM'd you and said, hey, I see that you're moving to Dallas. If... uh, no, you had moved to Dallas. Yeah, at that I was point. here. You I had posted here. that I was here. Yeah, you posted that you were here. And I said, Oh, I see that you're here in Dallas. If you ever want some YouTube tips, uh, hit me up. And you was like, All right, when? And I yeah. was like, Hey, come by Sunday. Um, what made you move to Dallas? Seminary school, actually. So I was a travel nurse. I don't think that I would have stopped travel nursing, but I felt that God was calling me to go to school. Um, and so that's literally the only reason why I moved here. So you moved here for seminary school. Yeah. And how'd you meet him? How'd you meet old Isaac over there? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I saw him at school. Um, it was like we were in this like big stadium style seating room and he was in the back of the room. He stood up to introduce himself and it was maybe a month into school and I turned and saw him. I think he spoke. I don't I don't know what exactly you said. Maybe mm-hmm. you just said your name. Mm-hmm. And I turned around. And I was like, oh, my God, who is that? <laughs> Oz, you done, you done, you done pulled it. Come caught her attention at hello, huh? <laughs> but I felt like he was looking at me too. What's yeah, your eyes? So what's I you was, looking? At? I was. Oh, you was. In fact, he um, saw me before it was that. two weeks before, maybe a week or so before that. Mm. I saw her, and I texted my friends. I was like, man, this is cute girl in, 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 in class. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, then, it's seminary. This, you don't really expect you don't, you don't, to run nah, into the like. The, nah, you just yeah. yeah. Why is that though? Why is that seminary <laughs> school? It be the the. Don't do it. Okay, hey man. Anyways, why, why is it? so we saw each other. We didn't speak to each other at school. I felt like he wanted to speak to me, but he didn't speak to me. Yeah, I I, I was looking at her the whole time. Like when she's walking out the door, I'm looking at her. And yeah, she, I think you turned. I felt around like and you he wanted me. to speak to yeah. me, and it just we just didn't speak. And so, but I knew his name from you know. Uh, it was like it was listed on the board and he was a leader. And so his name was on the board. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to see this guy again. So mm-hmm. the week goes on and I'm thinking I'm going to see him whenever we have that meeting again. The next week. comes. So what month was this? This was September. Yeah, August, September. Yeah, yeah. It, it was September. OK. And uh, and I didn't see him the next week. And so I was like, oh, my goodness, how am I going to like ever run into this guy again? I was like, I'm never going to see him again. Small seminary. Yeah, small seminary. And so I find him on social media. Oh, you wouldn't look for him. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't look for him. How you Stalk. find him? How you Stalk. find him? Stalk. How you find somebody <laughs> on social media? Because his social media name is his name. is Isaac oh, Shepard. okay, okay. So, you know, I mean, because some people <laughs> oh, have like yeah, a whole different username. He announced himself yeah. in the class. his name. Mm-hmm. So I followed him. I didn't want to because I wanted us to meet organically, but I followed him. That's organic enough. You stood up in class. 
I know, but we, well, okay. And so I followed him. He follows me back and I just was like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. He sent me a DM and I had posted a video with books in the background. He sent me a DM and he was like, I think I recognize those books in the background. Uh, do you go to <laughs> seminary school? Did you know it was her? No, no one. I didn't know it was her. Oh, you did? I didn't. I didn't, he didn't, yeah, know, I, it I didn't know it was her. <laughs> so, but I saw the books and I knew. Oh, you were just trying to talk to two different people. <laughs> exactly. I knew by those At books that school. she went to the school. And so I was like, hey, you know, do you go to seminary and stuff like that? And then, I didn't really have a chance to respond, but so I went to OCBF that Sunday. And so this is what's crazy is because, you know, the church is huge. There's so mm -hmm. many different people, mm -hmm. but he saw me at church and literally like ran me down. Oh, you did? Yeah, so I'm sitting down and I was about to, for some reason I was just waiting and I, I was about to reply to her DM. And I look to my left and I see this this black girl walking down the aisle with her hair just like this. Yeah. yeah. And that's how she has it on her, her profile. Page. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. Is that her? <laughs> Jesus, is this you? <laughs> exactly. You gonna bring her right to me, Jesus? <laughs> And so I'm, I'm looking at it, and, and no lie, I was kind of looking at it throughout the service. I was trying to look at different pictures to see if that was Not her. listening yeah. to the sermon. No, you, because you, you can't. I'm sorry. No, no. Sometimes you get distracted. When she she had her mask on, so I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. But I I figured it out because she had a part in her hair, and yeah. I was like, that's her. That's her. And so I started thinking of how I was going to go Approach and introduce, and introduce myself. And so afterwards, when the sermon was over, church was over, um... I saw her walking out with some other classmates. As he was talking uh, yeah. to someone. I was like, it's easy. It's he easy. literally <laughs> cut the people off that he was talking to. He was like, I have to see y'all later. I'm sorry. I got to. I ain't mad go. at you, Isaac. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> and he's like, I'm shy. I normally don't approach. And I'm like, that day he was not you shy. shy at all. At all, huh? yeah. yeah. Are you normally shy, Isaac? I'm normally a shy, reserved, introverted type of person. Like, I don't shoot my shot. I've yeah. never That's seen it. not the type it. of person I am. Like, my best friends know, but. We were we were talking and I was holding the conversation. It was like four of us, and I they the conversation was on me. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> I said I got a point to prove. I got to go. I got to go. I got to shoot my shot today. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, he said the Lord had, the Lord was the greatest wingman, and he done brought her right here. I got to do my part. I, I just got to do exactly. my part. And so and so when you started talking to her, when he approached you, were you like, oh my God, this is the guy I saw at, at seminary school? Yes. And so you were like, come talk to me. <laughs> He was like, uh, can I talk to you? Challenge. Well. Like the. <laughs> like, yes. It started off. Um, I didn't know how to a approach the situation because I had just met this other guy. And it was another another girl from seminary. There were so like we four were of us walking together. Yeah. And then her and the other girl started kind of going ahead of us. And mm -hmm. I was left. I was just talking to, to the other guy. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute. How am I going to do this? <laughs> yeah. And they started drifting away. You and I was like. I'm trying Dude, to talk to Dude, I got to talk to you later. Let me go holler at you. <laughs> yeah. I can talk to you anytime, bro. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so we, we ended up coming back, and we were all talking in a group. And I was like, okay, how am I going to get her number without them thinking that I'm trying to do this? <laughs> that you're thirsty. And so I was like, man, let me just get let me just get all y'all number. We can connect. Oh, you just make yeah, it a group thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can group. all go good. out and talk to each other that was good. about that was good. our testimony. Like, well played, well played. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened? I, I started, I intentionally did her last. Like he handed so me I his went, phone yeah, last. I, yep, handed her the phone last. And then. And we just started there, talking. Yeah, yeah we, just started, we started, talking. started talking that night and then started going on dates soon after. So that first conversation that y'all had, what, what, what was that conversation like, if you remember? We told each other our testimonies, like what drew us back into Christ. Mm, come on, let's talk about <laughs> it. We're here now. All right, so we're talking about these testimonies. So, yeah, so y'all first conversation, y'all shared y'all's testimonies, mm -hmm. uh, how y'all came to Christ. So what is that, Courtney? What brought you to the loving arms of Jesus? Ah. Well, so I grew up in the church, um, just been a church girl my whole life, but it was more so I was going to church because my family was taking me to church and I didn't have my own personal relationship with right. Jesus. And so when life got hard and when I got on my own, when I was in college, I was like young, wild and free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw one of your videos about that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I just 
I felt God like calling me back in. And there were a lot of things that I was comfortable with, things that I was comfortable with doing, ways that I was being comfortable. Like I was just comfortable being treated any type of way, honestly, um, because I didn't know who I was. Don't you break that down? I don't like generic stuff. Treated mm-hmm. any kind of way like what? Like in relationships. And so I went through a period where I was like in this relationship where I gave everything. I was super vulnerable. I would have like done anything. If he asked me to jump, I would have asked how high. Right. And he just drug me through the mud. Like he mm-hmm. just continually cheated on me over and over and over. It was like one of the most toxic situations I've ever been in. How long was that relationship? That was... Six years. Six years? I I was young. It was like puppy love going into college. Mm -hmm. And so that was a hot mess. And then after that, I was like, I will never allow anybody to treat me like that again. Mm -hmm. You can relate. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I told you. I said this date is significant for me. I'm telling you. So I was like, nobody will ever do that to me again. And so I came out with this mindset like, I am going to be the person who controls everything. I'm never going to be vulnerable again. I'm going to make sure I walk away with something. And so I started dating people for the wrong reasons. I started using people. And it was like all a game. No, break that down. You was using them what? You was, you was, you was. I dated people for status. I dated people for what they had, what they could provide me with, how it looked. I was really caught up in like the whole like Instagram thing, like just how the aesthetic of everything yeah. looked. Um, so was your gold dig during that time? <laughs> she gave me money when I'm in need. I feel like, I mean, if we're <laughs> honest, that's the reason why I would date people. That's the reason yeah. why, like, they were appealing to me. Yep. Um, and so I had this idea in my head, like. I'm going to get them for they get me first. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. I never felt God until I felt like, I don't, it, it was like a, a multiple things that were happening in my life where I felt like I needed to go back to church. Like I had lost my grandparents, things like that. And so when I started feeling like this pull, which now I recognize was the Holy Spirit, um, I started feeling bad about things that I never felt bad about before. And I also started to realize like, it's not just you using these people. You're also being used. You're giving yourself away and walking away with nothing of value. You know what I'm saying? Like anything that's earthly value, it's not really valuable anyways. And it's not lasting. So you have this void where you're, you still feel empty. You're trying to fill it with all these things and you just can't like you, you still feel empty. And so I went back to church and I started to realize like God is the only thing that can fill me up. Like he's the only thing that can truly satisfy me. So, and so how long was that phase of that wayward stage where you was like in a rebellion? How many years was that? Uh, It was like 22 to 25, about three years. About three years. Yeah. So for the last uh, five years, because how old are you? 30. Yeah. So for the last five years, you've been, you've been like, Pursuing God. Yeah. Yeah. So so you still went through some that. messed up relationships. With oh you. yeah, we can, <laughs> we can be saved, sanctified, and we still got our flush, as the old right. folks say, flush. Yeah. You know, ain't the flesh. They say flush. <laughs> so we still have our flush that gets involved. But um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that, Isaac. Mm-hmm. What's 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 your journey to Christ? So I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, my father's a pastor and seen me church for all of my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we used to travel to Sherman, Texas, which is about an hour and a half away. So we were devoted to God, and um, I sacrificed all my Sundays and Wednesday nights, sometimes Saturdays. Yeah. Um, So I I grew up in the church, and then I went to Texas Tech uh, where I ran track. I had track scholarship to run for them. And um, to make a long story short, I was – At home a little bit early because I didn't make it qualify for extra meets. And I was sitting on my bed one night at home in Arlington. And one of the guys, his name is Nigel, he shared a video of a guy talking about Judgment Day. And it brought fear into my heart. Um, Not because I was just this terrible kid. um, But I was a a good kid according to the world standards. Um, I was respectful um, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a bad kid. I didn't get in trouble a lot at school. Um, after my sophomore year, I just really matured and, um, I stopped messing around in class mm-hmm. and I was taking care of my business. But when I watched that video, I knew in my heart that I wasn't really living for God. I Even though you was raised in the church, father passed it. You said mm-hmm. you really wasn't living for God. Why do you say that? Mm-hmm. I, I had not made a conscious decision 
to believe in Jesus and for him to be, to represent and live for him, like for him to, to be the focal point, for me to pursue the kingdom, for me to read the Bible and pray. I didn't have a, a prayer life. Yeah. Right. And you can't have a relationship with someone that if you, you ain't talking talk to. to. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. talk so, about it. um, so I had that, that deep conviction and for some reason, I, I always had this new King James version of the Bible with me that I won at a conference um, when I was a, a young teenager with my dad. And I always kept that with me, but never really used it. But it just kept it. It was the always fact that he was a young side. teenager walking around with a Bible. With a Bible. Right. King James version. <laughs> like, <that>. I'm like, <laughs> shoot, not the new living standard. Just, <laughs> right. just, he had the King James version. New King James. Right. That was a little modern. Yeah, a little, little bit. Just a little <laughs> you bit. You know, they took out the die and thou. <laughs> yeah. Lord Jesus. But so I started reading that. And ironically, I started reading the book of Romans, which is very easy for you to. You know, the Romans road to salvation. It just yeah. Paul just lays out the whole salvation plan there. And I started reading that, man, and every night I would just be convicted of all the sin and I would confess. And it was just like this I'd started this journey of repentance. And I just made conscious decisions. I'm gonna change my life, I'm gonna start living for Christ. And so that was when I made the decision to just believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and that I'm gonna live for him. And so that that that's when I believe that I became saved. That's my journey. Yeah. Um, so people will hear that and say, "Now, if you're this good guy, you're not doing that. What are you repenting about? Like, mm -hmm. what 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 are you repenting about?" So the Bible says Romans three that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So in in we've all missed this mark. Like, I was created, we were created for God. Right. But I wasn't living for him. I wasn't giving him any attention, any glory, any honor. We, but we were created to live for him. Even when you was running track. You know, Even, a lot of times you praying before track meets, you still didn't feel like you were giving God glory? No. You feel like that was your strip that got you there? No, yeah. I, I don't think that a simple point to the sky and a prayer before I ran my track meet was living for God. Talk about it. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's not living for God. That's not really giving him glory. Um, it comes in how you live your lifestyle, your mindset, your heart posture, um, worshiping God, singing songs, reading the scriptures. That's how you grow. Courting God like you were court Courtney. Courtney. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. how that rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Courting God like you were court Courtney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. I think that's, that's, a, that's a huge point that you just made because oftentimes um, we have a form of godliness by, mm -hmm. by, you know, literally or have a form of godliness, but yet we're denying the power therein where it's like we go to church. So it looks good. It's the mm -hmm. optics of it all. Yeah. Uh, as Courtney was talking <laughs> about that, she did stuff even from a worldly standpoint mm -hmm. for the optics of it, but, for the yeah. for the Instagram post, for how this a temporary feeling mm. that she chased after. And then she got to this point where she said, I need more. And yeah. here you are doing the same thing where you like, you know, I was raised in church, you know, everybody be like, Oh, he's a good man. No, nah, he's just a good. And then right. you say, but no, nah, y'all really don't know where my heart is, mm -hmm. right. man. And that's the most amazing thing that you said is you said the heart posture. I always talk about our heart to know that God says, I want your heart. That's the first right. thing that he, he comes after because if he can get your heart, he can get your love. He can get you. Exactly. And so that's amazing that you shared that story. So y'all were talking on the phone. Um, what else was discussed in that first phone conversation? conversation that was pretty much it don't you was that yeah. a long phone call like two hours and normally them first phone calls be yeah a long time <sighs> i can't i can't remember i don't think it was that long i think maybe it was like it was between an hour and two hours but also he like i couldn't tell if he liked me even though he had kind of like approached me and asked for my number and called me the same day he kind of gave me the vibe where it was it was almost friendly like he would give he was like oh you're a very beautiful girl but then he was just like okay let's get back to talking about jesus you, you, like, you would throw that in there you would let yeah, him know I, I threw little hints in there i was like yeah i was i was in class because i talked about it a little bit i was in class and i saw you i was like She's beautiful. And then I would just like keep going. But I, I thought he was like brother in Christ. Like, oh, you're yeah. just a beautiful sister. <laughs> a beautiful sister in Christ. <laughs> yeah. Did I'm you like, at least ask that y'all ask if y'all were in relationships with anybody else? Not that first phone call, I don't not think. The first one. No. So you just did you just assume that he was single? <laughs> I just didn't know if he liked me or not. What so about you? Did you did you assume that she was single? The fact that she gave you a number? Well, <laughs> like what did you think? 
I can't. I can't. Or did you remember. not care? You like I don't, I don't care think, who she with. She no, be I he does not remember a lot. Yeah, I, I don't remember a lot. I don't remember yeah. a lot of my conversations. But did did I talk about? I think I talked about how I got to seminary. So that was a little bit more about Maybe. my testimony because that summer. Oh where yeah, I was, you did tell me that. Started to believe. Um, I'm reading this word and I'm like, man, this it's it started. It was like this fire that started 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 to to build within me. And when I got back to Lubbock, uh, where I went to school, I was attending a Baptist church, Rising Star Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Pastor Culver there. And I asked him if I could read a verse of scripture um, every Sunday. And so he was okay with that. And so I would get up every Sunday. A, That's good. A, a, a scripture verse that God laid on my heart, and I would read it. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the point where I was like, okay, maybe um, the crowd either doesn't understand what I'm reading or they might misunderstand what I'm reading. So I went back to the pastor and I asked him, you know, can I give a little short exhortation or explanation of what I'm reading to make sure that they they understand? And he was okay with it. So for about a year, I would get up and I'd give a word of inspiration from mm-hmm. a passage of scripture. And then it got to the point to where those little three, five minutes wasn't enough. <laughs> and I started I love it. Yeah, I started contemplating my call to preach and I got confirmation from my father, from the pastor, and from the congregation. And then God gave me a subtle internal confirmation that I was called to preach. And so I started preaching, started preaching, and then God started shutting the door on track really mm, hard. Yeah. And it was really difficult for me because I wanted to wow. I wanted to do something with track, but it just would not happen for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how God works. Yeah. He just you know, slowly shut the door and... When I graduated, I always had plans to to either be a football coach or um, athletic director. But um, when I was done, I wasn't feeling that. And I thought, man, what it would be amazing to just sit in class with my Bible and just study the Word. And so off I went to seminary. I started off at SMU, and then um, a number of things happened there for a semester, and then I ended up at DTS. And then and he met me. Yep, that's, that's wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So we talked about that, and I think that was pretty much the gist of our first yeah, conversation. it was. When did it go from, hey, you cool, brother and sister in Christ, to mm-hmm. I like you? So the very next Sunday, we went out, but it was with a group of friends. Um, and I think then we knew that we were interested with each other, but it was like maybe five or six of us that went out together. And then after that, we planned, we're going to start doing things one-on-one. So maybe like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And then who said something first? Probably him. What you What you say, Isaac? Yeah. You probably I mean, remember I, that either. I dude. Said, yeah, I don't. He was I very interested. Date, yeah, I set up the date and it was kind of clear. Date that went I'm terrible to, though. What happened? Yeah, it was our first. Our two first dates two dates. Well. Oh my yeah. gosh! What happened? The first day, I literally like on the date, I was like, I'm. I think I, I can't talk to him anymore. Like, this is not going to work for me. Wow. <laughs> because we just, uh, like, we have an age difference. And I feel like the first two dates, I really, really noticed it. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, I've never dated anyone younger than me before. And I was like, I can do it if it's not noticeable. But the first two dates, it was so noticeable to me. And then also, like, our conversation, we could have good conversation now. But our conversation at first it was like he was just preaching to me. It was literally like we couldn't How just. you preach to it? I was. It, that, it, it was that, like he was talking at me. Like yeah. we, it wasn't conversational. But he just gets so excited about the word. And now I get it because I know him. But he would just be like, you know, and Isaiah this says this. And I would be just on the phone like. What, what, what am I supposed yeah, to say back? Like, and so, amen, uh, amen, Isaac. Right. Yeah. Amen. Preach. I mean, and I'm so grateful that he loves the word the way that he does. But like, when we were getting to know each other, I felt like I couldn't really get to know him. It was just more so like we. It was just <laughs> like Bible reading. So he did that on the first date. What y'all, what y'all do on the first date? <laughs> no, on the first date. The day we went out to eat, but he just came off very 24. Like if that, if, I mean, yeah. if you could just imagine, he just came off very twenty-four year old, and, I and so there's was, a six-year age difference between six y'all. years. Yes. And um, what made you? When did you find out how old he was? 
uh, when we first were in the in that group of friends, when we were all talking to each other, they all stated their ages, and they were all like the same age. And then I'm last, and I was like, well, you know, um, I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when she said age? When she said that, I was like, oh. I, was, I was like, ah, it makes it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> he makes fun of me all the time because yeah, her age yeah. and so and so did you feel like you had a chance by her being 30 or you like ah i'm just gonna see i ain't putting a lot of hope in it i didn't know because and it's it's funny that she um she felt that way about my age like she could feel the age difference because it might seem for a moment that i'm immature or that i'm just like mm -hmm. i haven't matured yet yeah he's not but I knew that I could always date someone older because of my spiritual maturity. One hundred percent. Yeah, and I'm just I'm just vulnerable, and I'm I communicate, and I understand you know relationships and how it's supposed to work, and so I knew that that wouldn't be like, a, a problem for be too a long. Big problem for too yeah. long. Yeah, so, See, yeah. I can respect that. I didn't think that because I've always dated someone older. who was older, and mm -hmm. so I assumed you know you have this idea in your head about who the person is going to be, and like of course you don't want to like solely okay they have to be just like this yeah. but he kind of came in a package that i wasn't expecting right and so i was like 24 oh my goodness and so i think i may have had like some preconceived notions too but i'm glad that we didn't let that you know i had those um i was talking to some friends of mine um and they were saying that it was like what age range and at first i was saying around i'm 43 so i said about 35 and up and then I had friends said, you wouldn't date a woman 27 years old? I said, absolutely not. My daughter, 25. Why would <laughs> yeah, I do that? Yeah. And it was like, I mean, you ought to just give it a chance. You give it a chance. But I've seen a lot of, I've had a lot of 30-year-olds approach me. Mm -hmm. And I used to be so like, I used to discriminate. I'll be honest with you. you I'd be like, you a 30 year old 30-year-olds were just, they immature. Kids. They, they just kids. Kids. And, not that, and, and, then, and then that's what I made up in my head. But then every 30-year-old that I know, they grown women. Like, they know mm -hmm. there's no difference. Yeah. And so I said, boy, it's crazy how we get these preconceived ideals yeah. about people. And where did it come from? You know, you just yeah. made up in your head. Heck, when I was 28, I was married. Mm -hmm. So then I look at a 30-year-old and be like, oh, she's she a kid. Like, really? <laughs> right. You got a whole career? <laughs> exactly. A place, staying on her own. Got a, Some of them got their own houses and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about you a, you a child. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But that was my own bias. And so even on this journey, I talk about my podcast. I'm on the journey with me as I discover, uncover, and recover love. Well, the discovery phase of that journey is trying to realize well, unpack what, what it is. First of all, who I am, what I desire, what type of wife I believe is my purpose partner. Yeah. And, um, and, and now the uncovery, which is a phase I'm in now, as I say, I'm shaking trees and seeing what kind of fruit falls out yeah. where I, I, I take these biases that I had in my mind and go, you know what, let me, cause I don't do no online dating. You know, mm -hmm. I've never been on no dating site, you know, you tried that. <laughs> I've never done that. And so now because of the way the universe is and the economy and the world or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm entertaining people on social media, like on mm -hmm. Instagram or people hit me up on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But before that, I never thought I'd meet somebody online. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just, everything's shifted and I've become more malleable to say, okay, God, however you want to bring it, whether, and at first I wouldn't date long distance. Yeah. I, um, I opened my mind up to that around April or something. I said, mm -hmm. you know what? Why do I keep putting God in a box? Mm -hmm. Like God is so big. So let me open my mind up and say, and God, people move you so want. much now mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. Yeah. Like you moved in August, August the 16th. And by September you met him. And then y'all was on y'all first date around what, what was that still in September? Yeah. It was the end of September. Mm -hmm. See yeah. that quick. That yeah, quick. that's true. When did um, what conversation took place for you to say, OK, listen, in my mind, I said this is never going to work. And then what started changing the tide? Mm. So I knew him from the conversations that we had and he's a very unique person. He literally like he just loves God so much and sin literally grieves him. And mm. I remember that uh, he was supposed to speak to the youth about something and he had posted something afterwards that I could tell like he was kind of grieved over whatever was shared. And so I reached out to him. We hadn't spoken to each other for a whole week. And I reached out and I just said, I'm just checking on you, you know, that's it. And then we ended up talking and he was like, you know, I know we haven't talked, but 
I don't want us to stop talking mm. to each other. Go ahead, Isaac. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Isaac. <laughs> What'd you say, Isaac? I don't want us to stop talking to each other. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, we, because we, our second date wasn't very good either. We went to a park, <laughs> yeah. and we were, we were just clashing. It wasn't a, yeah. a it wasn't a, a organic conversation. Mm-hmm. It was just difficult, and I think at that point, we were about to just say stop bye. talking. Yeah, yeah. We were about to stop talking. And so, they got an argument or something? No. no, we just had a difference of opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and I just then, said, hey, it's enough. It was great. It was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm the type, like, if, if if we don't talk, I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah. Just, yeah, just, that's crazy that's to why, me. That's the way a lot of dudes are, though. <laughs> like, dudes like, be like, why? <laughs> because they don't, they, it's not a lot. It's, first of all, men. If so, you saw someone that you used to talk to, you wouldn't, like, even say hi? I mean, I would speak to them if it ended bad. I'm not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If it ended bad. Yeah. If it ended bad, like the yeah, the one I walked away from on this date. If you sorry, I'd just be like, <laughs> I just keep on walking. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, I'm not gonna go out my way. Like I'll say hi, but it's not. Yeah. We're not gonna have a conversation if I try to talk and it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. It's just because it looked like okay. he he trying too hard. Right. And man, okay. we got the biggest ego, so it's like I see. Because then what's, what what happens if he does speak to you and then you look the other way? <laughs> then he like see see see, see how you did. <laughs> I was trying to be godly. Now you over here ignoring me. I would now, do now that. Now his feelings hurt, but he don't know. He only know you for 30 days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so he don't know what you going to do. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so you said that, so y'all was passing each other at school and wasn't, you weren't speaking to her? No. no. So it wasn't that long. We don't see each other at school. Yeah, we. I'm barely on campus. And, yeah. yeah. So, but we, I mean, it was. So like the fact a, y'all saw each other, that rare moment was a very rare moment. Exactly. Yeah. Because we do not, we don't yeah. see each other at school. It was like the sec. it was like the third second or third week and she saw me and never seen me before i had never seen her and never seen her again at school since then except when y'all we would make a way to see each other after we knew each other yeah Yeah. but we wouldn't have no (laughs) yeah so the reason why we started talking again too other than that is because i started i just kind of zoomed out and i looked at the bigger picture and i started looking at all of the qualities that she has um you know, she she's she's gentle, she's kind, um, she seems like she would be loving. Mm-hmm. Um, this is all the things that were going through my head. Um, she seems like she would, and I know everybody hates this word, but that she would be submissive. submissive to, yeah, I know they hate that word, but when you're, God, when you're a godly woman, then right, you understand yeah. what that means. To be a submissive to a God, to godly leadership. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I started looking at that and, and just looking at how mature she was, and I was like, wait a minute, okay. Because we were about to split for some, yeah, we were just for being some stupid. unnecessary reasons. Yeah. Like we don't watch the same show, or we don't, we don't, yeah. li- we don't listen to the same music. Because I would cause, mention movies, and he would be like, "I don't know what yeah. that is." Because I'm thirty, <laughs> he's twenty four. I say I can't talk to no twenty seven year old. <laughs> I'd be sitting there talking about good times, and they'd be like, oh, "What? what is that? I, I would love a to have a good time, time with you." Exactly. Be like, <laughs> no, All right. But. All right, let's try this again. Yeah. So you know? I mean, I started thinking about that, and I was like. That's, that's, no, she fits the description of a biblical wife. And so I'm mm. like, okay, let me keep trying to talk to her and see if we can work through this and work things out. And We did. Yeah. Did you say that to her? He did, yeah. Did I, did I say yeah, that? Yeah, okay, you said yeah, that. Yeah, okay. He told you that. He was like, hey, listen, these are characteristics and qualities I like about you. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's so crazy because. Isaac, you better come on. Come on, give me a fist pound. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. That's what I'm talking about, boy. He, boy, I like it when somebody speak up, boy. Don't be no little punk now. Talk. Right. <laughs> Dude, let, them, let them know where you stand, Isaac. Now, he excuse. told me listen, that. Listen, <laughs> yeah. Let them know. Young men. Older men, whatever your age, let them know. Yeah. Let them know how you feel. You got to communicate. There it's, it is, you know? boy. There it is. <laughs> so he told me those things, and it was so crazy because, and that's, there's been a multitude of, like, little things where I I've call just. God went, moments. Yes. Yes. And that was one of them. You know, he just was like, you know, you create this environment of peace and, mm. you know, all these different things. And I'm like, wow. Like, the last person that I Hold dealt on, stop with. stop real quick. Do you understand what he meant when he said that? You create an environment of peace. Do you know the number one need for a man is peace? If you read Proverbs 31, it talks about a quarrelsome woman. It's better to live on the top of the roof Mm. of your house than to share the space of a quarrelsome woman. Mm. So for a man, when he comes home to his sanctuary and he says, this is peace in my house, Mm -hmm. he ain't going to want to go nowhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, that you create this place of peace. That's a be- That's the highest honor a man could ever say about you. Mm. Yeah. Oh, 
it's, it's, it's a high honor, boy. I'm telling you. I'll take it. It's high. It's high. <laughs> Oh, gosh, it's high. <laughs> but the thing is, is the last situation that I was in, I remember him saying. It was the opposite of all I said. It was the opposite. Yes, and I'm like, so, I mean, he's, because I remember having a conversation. I was just like, you know, I just really want to be with someone that I can submit to. And, you know, just all these things that I wanted in a godly relationship, which that wasn't you a said godly that. relationship. You said that to yourself. You wanted to, you wanted to submit. Yeah, I said, I said that to the, to the last guy. And he was like, oh, you would never be able to submit to anybody. <laughs> Like, oh, you would never. And so I meet him and <laughs> he's like, you know, you're just, you're so peaceful and you're so this. And I'm like, see? <laughs> yeah. But he I'm, makes me feel safe. That's another word. There it is. Yeah. Did you hear that, Isaac? Yeah. yeah. The number one need for a woman is to feel safe. <laughs> if a woman can feel safe with you, you can have her mind, body, and soul. Because she says, you're not going to violate me emotionally, yeah. spiritually. You're yeah. not going to spiritually abuse me. Yeah. I yeah. feel like you're not going to uh, take advantage of me physically. Mm -hmm. Financially, you're not going to use it as a weapon against me. Mm -hmm. If somehow so you start good. out earning me, I feel safe with you. Yeah. And when you, when you provide that safety for a woman, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I, we had one of those, that, that's good that you said that. We had one of those God moments, what you call it. Yeah. Um, it was one night where we literally, I was I was in her apartment, and we were just oh, kicking yeah. it. And um, for some reason, we, we, we just put our phones down. She didn't have a couch at the time. And yeah. so we were literally just sitting on the rug, yes. chopping it up for that's about good. two, three, four hours, yeah. just talking. Legs getting numb. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, right, and right. I just moved here. My couch is here, so don't, right. don't, don't be talking about. I got me a couch now. It took a minute it took a for minute. it to be delivered because COVID was here. tripping. Now y'all remember COVID was had stuff on back order that rooms to go. So y'all, I better get my dog on couch. Well, you ordered. She ordered one, and then it had. She had to send it. Something yeah, happened. Yeah. It, it took a, a lot for a lot of that stuff to come. I'm telling y'all, remember that boy? I was like Jesus. I, it's crazy. Whew, it was hard to get furniture. Right, but um, so. Now, the way we closed that night was very special because we listened to worship music. I kind of put yeah. her on Maverick City Music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I put her on Maverick City Music, and, and she was just, you know, enjoying it, listening to it. And yeah, that was really big for me because, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, for some reason, I I felt, we just started hugging each other. Yeah. And um, I started praying. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah that that he night. prays yeah. over me all the time. Mm. Like it's not like he just like prays, but like he will literally cover me in prayer, like just randomly. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Why? Why do you love that? Because I just feel covered. I feel protected. I feel like he he cares about every aspect of my life because he prays about every aspect of my life. He prays for my protection. Like I mean, he just. He's just amazing. <laughs> Man, when I tell you, because I'm telling you, I knew what Isaac meant when he said, yeah, I may be 24, but on a spiritual level, I'm 64. <laughs> <laughs> and so he like, and I know that what my deficiencies are from an age standpoint, yeah. from a spiritual standpoint, God can cover me and I can meet some needs in your life mm. that have never, ever been met before. Yep. And the fact that, and I say this all the time, oh, y'all finna have me preach. The reason why I don't care about a woman's past, I said this on one of my episodes, like a woman can say she had, 25, 35 sexual partners. I don't care about all that. It don't intimidate me mm. because I always say the version of her that I'm going to get, no man has ever had. Mm. Because yeah. I know how to cultivate that woman. Oh, yeah, boy. You're preaching. Oh, hey, listen. So, so when, so <laughs> Isaac gets the opportunity to hear you talk about the guys and all this type of stuff, he's sitting back like, <laughs> yeah. eh? I don't care about your exes. I don't care about all that. That don't that don't intimidate me yeah. because I know how to provide something in your life that no man has ever been That's able to so provide. True. I know how to extract and cultivate something out of you that no man has ever been. No man has been able to cultivate out of you. Absolutely. And so he sits with his with, with, in, in holy boldness, like <laughs> you thirty. I'm twenty four. We can rock. You know what I'm saying? Right. He's yeah. like, I know you dated older guys. It's it's, it's fine. It's fine, he but really they ain't does. never been they ain't never been this to you. Mm -hmm. And when you go, Oh, I feel safe and you've never felt safe before, yeah. then he go, check the thank you, Jesus. <laughs> check right here. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's what I love it because when God orchestrates something, he knows the nuances to say, 
That's why I said, did he say that to you? Mm -hmm. Because I know the power in communication. That if he kept that in his head and say, well, okay, I understand we have an age gap. I know this, whatever. But I'm just going to operate from this space. Yeah. But never communicate that. If he communicates it, then you go, he can say something to you that you've always been waiting to hear. Mm -hmm. And he can provide confirmation to stuff that you that you only said in your private time with God. Mm -hmm. And then when he says X, Y, Z to you and say, you know what? Um, I see you as a woman that 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 will be willing to submit to a godly man. You go, see, I told that old joker back then. And I can, that's confirmation exactly. for you. And exactly. so it's checklist that we're all checking off in each other's lives, and it's the most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you said that you you stopped in a minute ago and said he's just such an amazing guy, what were you thinking about when you when you said that? Oh my gosh! I mean, just everything about him. First of all, like his relationship with God, and I wanted someone. I literally prayed for someone who would adore me and he does just that. Like he literally adores me. And there are things about him that I didn't know that I wanted. Like his love for other people is something that I admire so much about him. Um, there are so many things that I admire about him. And Why that, is that important? His love for other people. Because I feel like it's just an example of how godly he is. Like it's an extension of his relationship with God. Talk about it. And he just cares so deeply for other people. It really inspires me. Um, so that's something that I, I, I value about him, but he, and he's also another thing is that he's a teacher. And so he like, he's very well versed in the word. He's very connected to God, but he's also like, he cultivates those things in me too. And so we study together. We talk about God often. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just, I, I just love him. Yeah, I don't think we have, there's a conversation that goes by where we don't, I don't mention something yeah. regarding the word or God. <laughs> yeah, probably not. How do y'all handle those moments where y'all, because one thing that I find is cr it's kind of crazy because the more intimate you get with each other from a spiritual standpoint, the more intimate it becomes physically because mm -hmm. you'd be like, it's like it's, it does something. I don't know what that is. The correlation <laughs> between getting closer to the holies of holies in the chamber room with God yeah. that you want to get in the chamber room with your woman. Right. I don't know how that coincides because <laughs> it should be totally. It should be like holiness just cause of separation. Yeah. How do y'all deal with those moments where uh, hormone starts raging and all that good stuff? We pray. Communication. We. we have, oh yeah, he's yeah, very open. We we have already discussed that this is something we're pursuing. Um, and we've discussed boundaries that, okay, yeah. we're not going to go this, we're going to do this, because we know, we, we kind of know as adults mm -hmm. where the line is. Yeah. But it's know. also good to discuss them, because if you don't, you'll, yeah. like, push the limit. Mm -hmm. So, and everyone's boundaries are different, but it, we had to be smart. Like, we're not going to even come close to the line, because, like, you don't see how close you can get to a shark's mouth. You just, you try to run. Right. Like, for example. That's a good point. For example, I don't stay very late at her home. Mm -hmm. um, I don't go in her bedroom. We yeah. stay in the living room. So those are like two examples that we've like. Isaac, said. Isaac, I'd have made a lot of things happen in the living room, Isaac. I <laughs> made a lot of things. We won't make it to the bedroom. I'm just saying. Oh I'm being my transparent. God. I'm being transparent. The kitchen and the okay. hallway. Oh, my oh. bad. So. <laughs> In the stairwell. No, oh, anyway, wait, so wait. so what you were saying is you put boundaries up and you say, "Hey, listen, um, I ain't gonna go into the bedroom," and you leave. What 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 what's the what's the cutoff time? What do you try we don't to have stay? One, but I feel like we you leave before nine. Yeah, before nine. At mm -hmm. least. Yeah, that's good. That's like pushing it because yeah. I, I mean she's in. You know, I'm I live like thirty minutes away, so I need to get home. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so y'all, so y'all so discuss what was that conversation like? Hey, we're both on the same page where we want to mm -hmm. be abstinent until we get married. You brought it up first. I it was on the phone. I remember you mentioning it, which was great because I was like, oh, this is great that he's bringing this up because no I already wanna, feel this yeah, way. Yeah, because ain't no dude gonna be like he don't want. He be like, I'm gonna let you say it first. I'm and telling then, you, and then he agree with you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. I mean, if, yeah, if you want to wait, cool, that's right? cool. <laughs> that's, that's I respect cool. that. I respect that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shoot, that's I mean, it. I mean. Yeah. And in his mind, he right. like he looking right. for a door of opportunity. Right. Yeah, exactly. it's a challenge. Yeah, but with him, he was already doing that. He was already pursuing that, and so it made it comfortable for me too, because it was like, all right, well, this is understood. This is what we're doing. Um, so yeah, Isaac, what, what did you say in that conversation, and why was that important? Listen, I cannot remember the exact words he I was, said, but um, <laughs> he's terrible because because of because of her 
characteristics and who she is, I did not want to go there unless I was fully committed. Right, mm-hmm. I just I I believe that I didn't deserve that part of her mm. unless I've put a I've fully committed myself before God mm-hmm. and I've married her and that's that's the purpose. Why of, you say because of who she is? Because because of her characteristics, she's a godly woman. She's pursuing the Lord, um, and all those things I talked about earlier. And so I respect that. I respect the that. relationship feels different. Yeah. It just feels holy. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. I I hate to. Say, I mean, you should treat everyone like this we're all image bearers but our relationship feels different because we've built a foundation on god and so Mm -hmm. it's like it's sacred like Mm -hmm. we can't i mean every we're human and we're flawed Mm -hmm. and we're you know sinful in nature but it just it feels different i don't even know how else to explain it have you ever had a guy probably so look at you like that (laughs) Oh, have you ever had a no. guy look at you and say those things about you to no. be like, she deserves this? No. Have you ever had guys that lie to you and be like, I'm going to marry you, I'm going to marry you? Yep. Mm. Wifey and, yeah. uh, you know, just little different things to get you. Oh, could you think about us having little little things? Little baiting. They just keep baiting. To you. keep, yep, yeah. keep you on that little, str- but it's like everything that he says, I know that he means it. Because his actions are lined up with his exactly. words. Exactly. And I always say they'll find out is if their actions line up with their words. Right. If he's saying that I want you to be my wife or he's having, or, then he has to start first treating you like one. Right. Mm-hmm. And you start looking, you go, okay, he ain't treating me like no little jump off. He yeah. ain't treating me like no little girlfriend. He treating me like a wife. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't even have to say it. Just his actions start showing you something different. You go, this is different. Like you just said, this is something totally different. Uh, mm-hmm. How has your friends and families responded to this age gap that y'all have? So Oop. we we met... Um, we met. We met my parents. I was um, terrified to tell his mom that I was thirty. Yeah, it kind of came. You could have lied because you look like you about no, I nineteen. Could, I couldn't no, lie with though. You. No, you ain't supposed to lie. But I'm saying you look real young. I was like, oh my god, she's gonna think I'm just here to you, take her baby. The little, the little hussy trying to take my little son. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the baby too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're coming for your your throat. Yeah, but they didn't care. No, nah. they yeah. loved me. My, my parents. They loved. They love. They loved it when they yeah. met and. Like my mom, we were, we were talking on Facetime yesterday, and my mom yeah, comes mom in and says, "Hi, Courtney." I'm like, "Oh, thank God." No, yeah. Well, you got to think about it. Look, look at where y'all met. Y'all met a seminary. Yeah. Like, it ain't like church, y'all met at yeah. at uh, Quick Trip or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all y'all met at seminary, so it automatically shows your character just mm-hmm. by where y'all met. And she's like, right. "Oh, she's a seminary. Oh, y'all gonna be a little first lady pastor. Y'all gonna be all <laughs> y'all gonna be a little ministry couple. Oh, you know, they see it all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they they looking like, oh." Oh, because I always say this. I said <laughs> over and over again, I don't want a wife. I said people should be, you shouldn't try to find a husband or a wife. You mm. should link up with your purpose partner. Mm. I said, uh, God told me yesterday, I said, a spouse, you can divorce, but most people never divorce their purpose. Mm, yeah. They won't. Mm. You, you're, they, they, they will not divorce their purpose. And if they do, they always have a tendency to come back to it mm. like Jonah or whatever. And mm-hmm. he gets swallowed up by a whale. And he's like, okay, let yeah. me go ahead and go preach at Nineveh because this, this, I don't like the way it's going. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you'll always see people reconnect with their purpose. Mm. Uh, but what happens is, is that when you find two people that link together in their purpose, then y'all make each other greater. Right. It's just so effortless. It's like y'all having fun together as a as a couple and y'all look at each other and say you know what we are literally making each other better yeah because it's purpose driven Mm -hmm. uh and that's what's so beautiful about it so your mom is on 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 because you get the mama then you 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 in there like swimwear yeah yeah and i think that's it's a good point to share what happened before on that day before oh we had oh yeah what happened you want to share I mean, you, do you want so, me to? Okay, we can kind of. So Isaac don't be remembering off. everything. Yeah, so. I'm like, let me go ahead. Cause he... we, can, we can go, like, just cut me off when you need to. Okay, okay go ahead. So we were um, we went to church together mm-hmm. um, at Oak Cliff, and then we chose to go to Papa Do's before we went to my parents' house. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting at the bar area because I wanted to watch the football game, mm-hmm. and uh, there weren't a lot of seats. And so um, I'm just talking, and then – yeah, so we're sitting at the bar, and there weren't a lot of seats in the restaurant, but there were a lot of seats at the bar. Like, it was enough to be spaced out. So I'm looking at him talking to me, and in my peripheral, I see this man come right next to him, sit right next to him. I'm like, why is he sitting right next to you? Like, there's space and, you know, social distancing. I had distancing. no idea. I was 
And so I'm looking at him and he's the man starts staring at him. And so I'm like, I'm going to need to tell him that this man is looking at him. Then the man speaks before I even get anything out. And he tells him, he was like, she's got you. She's got you. And and he was like, what? And he was like, she's got you just wrapped around her finger. <laughs> and the man has his shirt on and says, eat the manna. Eat the manna. The manna. And so, yeah. uh, <laughs> and so then he says he was, he goes into the Bible. Yeah, he just started. He just start. He quoted, and I'm, of course, I'm gonna remember scripture. He quoted Proverbs eighteen twenty two: mm-hmm. "He who finds a wife finds a good thing." And he was like, "She is your good thing. And she is your good Lord. thing." Right. And um, he like just starts pouring into us. Like first, he like confirms he's like, "This is your wife," and then he also just says like, "You two are gonna have a ministry together. It's gonna be super powerful. You're gonna touch all these different people in dark places." And he starts going over like a uh, prison ministry and ministry in the street and just all of these things that we're going to do when he tells us not to abort the mission, mm-hmm. um, not to give up early, but just like to continue to stay dedicated. What do you think when you heard that, Isaac? Man, I, I thought it was confirmation. She was shocked because um, that doesn't That, that don't happen that in Kentucky. Happen Ain't nobody ever. I've often had, I've often had those God Me encounters. Too. Me too. Right, mm-hmm. where just strangers just seem yep. to speak over your life and it's like, God is speaking yep. to you. And yep. so I just thought it was confirmation. We're going to meet my parents. and I'm I wasn't thinking, nervous no more. I was like, well, yeah, I'm his wife. Like, All right, what, what, what you going to say? You going to come against the Lord? Because <laughs> <laughs> the Lord said, we gonna, where's that man at? Where's the Eat the Man shirt at? I'm going to tell him to come with us. Right. So, yeah, we both saw it as, like, confirmation. So I was just like, wow, yeah, that happens. Yeah. At that time, were y'all even having conversations about husband and wife type of conversation? Probably so. Yeah. So when you heard that, that was confirmation. And when you heard that, what did you think? Um, I felt comfortable. I just felt comfortable because we had had those conversations. I was like, well, I guess. Uh, the Lord has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, that month, the month that y'all met the parents, you said that was around Thanksgiving, before Thanksgiving? When, when that was, was that? a little bit before. Yeah, I that believe. was before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Did y'all spend Thanksgiving together? No. Um, we didn't and where y'all end up going? Like, you end up going back home or where? I had Thanksgiving on with uh, campus friends, like seminary friends, and then you had Thanksgiving with your family. Yeah, right? we just stayed with my family. Yeah. Um, and so, as y'all are going down this journey, are y'all like, um, are y'all putting deadlines and timelines and stuff? Are y'all going with the flow at this point? We haven't put deadlines. No. Good. We haven't put deadlines. We we. Um, we we're moving a little bit quicker though I would say yeah. why you say that um because we've only been officially dating for maybe a month now over a little over a, a month a little over a month a yeah over a month been talking since September September October November December about four months um and we've already discussed marriage yeah finances, but that first September that. really it didn't count yeah I don't know if I'm gonna count <laughs> September no, it, it counts count. because it's it's, 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 right, the, it's right, the foundation right, right. it's how it starts October was I, no I love those journeys when it starts off rocky that's <laughs> right, when you know it's right. God when he can recover exactly you, when, when you you got to experience some losses exactly. you know Fantasia yeah. says sometimes you got to lose to win again so so <laughs> that's, that's still what, three months though yeah. yeah so I mean but within those three months we've communicated stuff that people don't even communicate oh we talk about everything game. Till they get yeah. married sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so we've just had ha- have had these mature conversations and being vulnerable with one another. So um, Yeah, we know we are each other's person. Yeah, we kinda So we, it's we, just like we're just I don't So like we don't have a timeline, but we know it's not gonna be It's gonna be a long time. Ain't gonna be a long time. <laughs> yeah. Brother Church shows we get we get mad. When we know who it is, we don't delay <laughs> we don't delay what the Lord is trying to do. And this Look. this we and this is kinda Normal in seminary school. I know it. That's what I'm saying. You always meet your spouse in in seminary school. Oh, in seminary school, they say ring by spring. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. They say ring by spring. That's what what I'm saying. I was like, oh, they're crazy. And then I ran into him the next few weeks. I was like, like, wow, Lord. Now all the women that's watching this podcast are going to be like, I think think that's where my husband (laughs) is. I need to go to seminary school. Even if I stay a semester, at least I go meet him. Oh, my gosh. Because those are people with intentions, Mm -hmm. you know, and (laughs) just by just by the sheer um, office of ministry Mm -hmm. it's better to do it with your purpose partner. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's. 
being kingdom minded, you always think about having your Eve yeah. uh, or your Adam. And so it's like, so it just kind of goes hand in hand. And it's so great because you're in this place of submission to Christ that yeah. you're open to whatever God brings your way. Exactly. And so you're in this place of submission and God says, Hey, pay attention to this. You go, Oh, Hey, and so true. You come in a package that you weren't even uh, expecting. And you go, Let's let's see it. I ain't doing nothing else, so let me see. Isaac, I told um I told uh the little boot thing over here when I first met her <laughs> that she needed to date multiple people. He I did. said I said what you should do, cause she said cause she, you know, she's had her little journey and we discussed that. And I said, What you need to do is even the playing field. Just date multiple people. Don't be having sex with people. Just date them. And yeah. so that when the guy who's really serious, he's going to step up and then all those other people will fall by the wayside. She said, I'm telling you, I'm too busy. I can't, I can't be, I can't I don't date. I can't date multiple people. I she said, can't. I can only be with one person and if it don't work out with him, then <laughs> go somewhere else. But I ain't no way I could be juggling all these people. I just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Because yeah. he I, immediately was like, no. Yeah. I think she, she actually talked about that she yeah, mentioned that i did and somebody else told you to do that too and I was someone like, else told me to do that and I, what I, what they're I just looking her, out yeah looking out for you won't be like what, hey, what, get your what heart I, hurt. I, I okay I remember, but what i told you to say <laughs> so when we first started you know having the intentional conversations we told each other we eventually did tell each other like hey i'm not seeing anyone else and he said the same thing and so a few weeks went by and i brought it back up and i was like hey like you know how we said that we weren't seeing anyone else? Because it was like the very beginning. Yeah. And I was like, is that like an expectation that we don't see anyone else? Or are you just like stating that you currently weren't? And he was like, no, 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 no. Like, we're not seeing anyone else. If you want to see other people, then you can see them. But you're not going to see seeing me. Yeah. 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 Isaac, yeah. <laughs> Isaac, there it is. Isaac said, I already know what I want. I was like, okay. Well, I but guess see, I'm but not. see, it works when it's somebody that's intentional. Exactly. When it's people that be like, yeah. oh, we just chilling. We trying to figure out. We gonna all figure all this right. out. <laughs> we gonna figure it out. We gonna figure. You don't know. I don't know either. So we just gonna go figure it out. But when it's somebody saying, that's why I say it's always. Great that you were oh intentional God. enough to have that conversation mm -hmm. to say, listen, was this something? Is this the standard that you're saying, or are you saying this is where you're presently <laughs> at? Yeah. He said, no, nah, yeah, yeah. this 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 is what we got. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is what's gonna be, Courtney. Oh and if you're gonna God. see everybody else, we'll say bye to me because well, you ain't exactly, gonna see me. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, I ain't mad like, at that. We're just not gonna do this. I ain't mad at that. And then what you say, Courtney? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I got a boyfriend. Here. Right. <laughs> did that make you? How did you feel when she said that? Um, I didn't have a problem with it. It's just it is what it is. If you're going to to because because I'm like I said I'm intentional and I was looking you know I wasn't really wanting to just date just to date. Yeah. Um, had you done that in the past? Is that how are you as a person? Have you always been like that, or were you the type that find a girl, you're in a relationship, you with her for a long period of time, or like what? What was your dating life before Courtney? So my dating life was kind of interesting because officially I've only had one girlfriend, and that was in high school. That was my senior year, and then we cut it off um, my freshman year in college, and then from then on. I talked to maybe two or three people and it got serious, but nothing really official. Right. And so I kind of, I kind of struggled to find someone that suited me um, to get that title. Right. Right. To get that title, and so, um, I kind of just lost my train of thought. Just that when you met Courtney, <laughs> then it was somebody that you said that I want to be extremely intentional about, and I don't want another situation like I had in the past where it was uh, just getting to know somebody that you want somebody that you're intentional about and you're in a relationship with. Right. Yeah. And then, so I didn't, I didn't, it got to the point to where I was like, I don't want to just date just a date. Like I want to find someone that I'm spending the rest of my life with. Like I want to date with the intention of getting married. So, um, when I, when we had that conversation, that's, that's what type of energy I was on. I was like, well, I'm, I'm dating you. I'm looking into the future and talk about it you know if you're gonna talk to some other people while we're doing that then i probably need to look somewhere else mm. <laughs> so, <Well>. period <laughs> that's, that's all right with me isaac you know your value right <laughs> isaac said, i know what i'm worth you understand me i ain't right. got time to fool right. with you Courtney. Uh, yeah how the, All right. When he spoke like that, that confidence uh, that that turned you on. He's so it? confident. Yeah, you was like, and so oh, when he was like, I, I'm shy, and I'm like, what? Yeah, she you lead believe, every man. conversation. Yeah. Like he's not shy about anything. And so when he did that, it made you 
submit to his 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 desire and say, yeah. okay, go ahead and leave, brother. Yep. Leave. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so uh, we're going into the new year. Are y'all planning on spending New Year's uh, Eve and we haven't even discussed it. We haven't even discussed it yet. I assume we'll be at church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, we'll probably be at church. <laughs> at church and watch night service. Yeah. Bringing the, the new year in with some praise and worship. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, one of the things that I take away from one of y'all's dates, I call that a date when you were in uh, the apartment, mm-hmm. is having worship. When I say yeah. that is, uh, uh, I said that in one of my letters to mm-hmm. my future wife is that that is the prerequisite. Yeah. You know, I have to be able to worship with uh, my future wife because other than that, then that's the most intimate place and posture that I'm ever in. Mm. And if I can't share that intimate space uh, with that, with my wife, then why, what are we doing here? Yeah. Right. You know, it just, right. it's just, it's not worth it. Um, mm. Anything else y'all want to add before we wrap this up? I've enjoyed talking to y'all so uh-huh. much. Uh, yeah. Um, I want I want to encourage everybody to go visit your YouTube channel. How can they find your YouTube channel, Courtney? So my name is Courtney Denise on social media. If you search Courtney Denise on YouTube, you'll be able to find my channel. And what are you talking about on your YouTube channel? Faith-based videos. So all types of videos, but mainly uh, Bible studies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what made you frame your YouTube channel around that? So I started by talking about nursing. Mm-hmm. And I talked about my nursing journey. And I talked about God's hand on it. And the video did really, really well. And I just like naturally gravitated toward, I want to tell people about God, period, not just in this one aspect. And so then I just started uploading Bible studies often. Your Instagram, uh, what's your Instagram? <laughs> you don't know? It's, 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 Courtney, it's Courtney Denise too, ain't it? It's no, it's Courtney. I am Courtney Denise. I am Denise. Courtney Denise, yeah. yeah, I am. I was, I was just forgetting <laughs> them first letters up there. I am Courtney Denise. I am Courtney Denise. And Isaac, how can they find you? I'm on Instagram. It's it's at underscore underscore Shep S H E P. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a YouTube channel, but it's really it's rough. It's yeah, just follow mine. Yeah, yeah just follow mine. her. She, I'll she, probably she, be on. She give him cameos on. Yeah, on yeah. Her. yeah. Just come to mine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I put a link to all your uh, for your Instagram and your YouTube, Courtney, and both of y'all Thank in you. the in the the the. The description. I'm trying to think of what it's called. In the description. Um, so uh, make sure y'all follow them. It's going to be pretty dope. Listen, man, I just want to bless y'all on Thank y'all's you. journey. Um, I just like it. I just like Aww. seeing this stage. I, I asked God to intentionally give me a couple that wasn't engaged mm-hmm. uh, because we're talking about these dating streets. I want to get right here, These the dating. Mm-hmm. I want to see that. And so God is so intentional to bring y'all on the podcast because it's just, it's right here at that beginning stage yeah. as y'all are intentionally dating each other and learning each other and growing with each other at this stage, yeah. uh, but still in your mind, knowing where you want the relationship to progress to, but y'all saying, I'm here for the journey. Mm-hmm. And so that's absolutely beautiful. Hey, listen, thank y'all for tuning in to Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Y'all give it up for my homie, Courtney and Isaac, y'all. You've asked. We're delivering the first ever meetup event for Dear Future Wife, a Valentine soiree for singles. Saturday, February the 12th, 2022, Dallas, Texas. Get your tickets at selflovesoiree.com. Proceeds benefit Kingdom Royale. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally, Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have 
been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. I'm so honored to have had Courtney and Isaac on the podcast today. I love how intentional God is with choosing the guests for the podcast. Um, Y'all have no idea, have no idea why each person is chosen to be on this podcast and one day I'll reveal it. I'm going to write a movie called Dear Future Wifey, and you'll see. You'll hear what led up to God producing this podcast and the pain that I went through in order to, you know, birth something as great as this. And it's going to provide reference, especially for those who have been watching since the beginning. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to touch some lives, I guarantee you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Hope you're enjoying your holidays. Um, love on somebody. Love on your loved ones. We've been through a very uh, tragic year. The last couple of years have been very tragic. Um, if you're like me, you've lost some loved ones and some friends or family or, or whatnot, but God is still in control and God is still good. So I just want to encourage you as you embark on this holiday season to – Share laughter, share joy, love on somebody, let them know that you love them. Uh, I'm under the weather right now, but uh, as old folks say, I'm yet holding on. Uh, been congested since Friday and getting over this cold. Uh, took a COVID test a couple of days ago and came out negative, so praise God for that. But this is my favorite part of the podcast where I talk to my future wifey. December, I, I wrote this letter this morning on December the 22nd, and so I'll be reading it, and this episode will be released today on December the 22nd, but this day is one of the most significant dates 
of my life. Dear future wifey, I'm writing this letter on December the 22nd, 2021. This is the date I rededicated my life to the Lord. The year was 1996. I was 18 years old. Just graduated high school in the spring. I remember walking down the altar with my daughter in my arms, knowing the direction I needed to father her could only come from the father. I was lost, clueless, misguided. His grace not only redeemed my soul, but provided wisdom and covering to father her. Accepting Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior was the wisest decision I have ever made. All my choices, subconsciously, are cross-examined through the lens of my faith. It's the foundation of my conversations. My faith provides reference on love. My faith is the guiding light that will lead me to you. My faith is the sermon that encourages me to be my best self, to ensure I'll be the best husband for you, your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.